Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to cover the intestines of the pig, both the small and large intestines. Starting at the cranial end, we'll travel through the small intestine from the stomach and basically follow the path that the food would take as it makes its way towards the anus at the caudal end. So uh, if we start with the cranial end, food will be in the stomach. And the portion of the stomach that is the most distal end right around here is called the pyloric region of the stomach and this is going to be a different type of epithelium than what we're going to have in the intestine in the stomach we still have those gastric pits but uh, as we move into the intestines then we start to get the villi so uh, basically there's going to be a transition from the stomach epithelium to the intestinal epithelium near this pyloric junction with the small intestine. Where we have this little bend here, this is going to be the start of the duodenum. And what this is called is the cranial duodenal flexure. And basically this will start the duodenum. The cranial duodenal flexure uh, basically is just a, a flexure, uh, exactly what it is, in the duodenum. But then what we have is that the duodenum will continue to extend, and it's going to run caudally and descend. So this direction of the duodenum gives it its name as well. So what we have here is the descending duodenum. Great. As we are right now on the right side of the body, there's going to be a uh, transition from right to left. And in order to do this, we're still in the duodenum, marked by the yellow here. We're going to make our way through the transverse portion of the duodenum, crossing towards the left side. And then we're going to ascend back up towards the cranial uh, direction. So this is going to then be the ascending duodenum. Great. This portion right here, if I just delete some of these, when we go from the duodenum to the jejunum, the next portion of the small intestine, right over here, this little junction, this is called the duodeno-jejunal flexure. Just combine the two names. Duodeno-jejunal flexure. And this will mark the start of the jejunum. The jejunum we have here in red, this is the second portion of the small intestine. Jejunum is going to basically provide an increased surface area for the nutrients to be absorbed from the food in the small intestine. And basically give time for the body to break down what it needs and absorb it. So the food is going to travel through the jejunum. The jejunum is quite extensive and it's connected and anchored basically in place by what I have here in gray, this mesojejunum. Meso means it's a mesothelial lined structure. This is the mesentery and it's associated with the jejunum and it's basically going to help keep things in place and provide lubrication in the abdominal cavity with the serosal fluid. So this is the mesojejunum. We write it like this. And the mesojejunum is also a important site for lymph nodes. I haven't drawn them in here, but if there, which there is, if there was lymph nodes in the drawing, we would see them scatter through the mesojejunum like these little black marks that I'm making here. And super important for the body's immune detection and response times, really. So those would be like the lymph nodes of the mesojejunum. Next is the last part of the small intestine, and as we follow the jejunum up this way, we're eventually going to get to what we see here, this fold that I've created, or in the gray I've kind of drawn this connection between the light blue, which is the last portion here of the small intestine called the ileum. And the ileum is going to connect with the cecum through this connective tissue fold, which is called the 
ileocecal fold connecting the two. And that's how we know we've reached the end of the jejunum. And basically, this will demarcate the extent of where we will call the ileum based on the two borders of this fold. So the food will travel through and it will pass through the ileum. Once it leaves the ileum, it's now leaving the small intestine. Some of it is going to go into the cecum here, but the majority of the flow is going to go towards the ascending colon, which I have in the, in the navy blue. The cecum in the pig, it's a little different than other domestic species. The cecum actually, it, uh, in some species, it's a sac-like structure. In other ones, it has what's called a tinea. Let me draw this a little better here. So we basically have these sacculations. And these sacculations are formed by these smooth muscle bands that run the length of the intestine, but also in this case, we're looking at the cecum and they're running the length of the cecum. So these tinea are going to create these sacculations called haustra. And this is different uh, in the pig because we don't see this in species like the carnivores or the ruminants. So their cecum looks like this. But basically food will enter the cecum, but the main direction is going to be towards that blue structure, the ascending colon. The ascending colon has two major parts. It has what I have here in blue and then the inner structure in purple. The blue is the centripetal coils. So I'll draw that here. These are the centripetal coils and they're basically going to be this spiral-like uh, tubular structure that's going to carry the food and uh, it, they're more expanded than the uh, centrifugal coil, which is what's on the inside. But it's a combination of both of these that creates the uh, ascending colon. I'll write that here. The large intestine is really starting at the ascending colon and maybe that junction with the cecum right here. So we have the ascending colon. We have the centripetal coil in blue, and then we have the centrifugal coil in the purple. But this junction right here has a name as well, where the centripetal meets with the centrifugal. We call this junction the central flexure. Great. So here we have the central flexure. Food is going to go back up the centrifugal root as it makes its way. And then finally, we're going to get, I'll switch to red here, into the transverse colon. Transverse, again, because we're going from the right side to the left side. We're crossing the median plane, just like we did here in the transverse portion of the duodenum. So we're crossing the plane as the transverse colon, and then we're going to become the descending colon as we make our way towards the caudal end of the animal. Then we get into the rectum, right here is the rectum. And the food will then go out the anus. And that's essentially the path of the food as it goes to, from the stomach through the small and large intestines. One more important thing that I forgot to mention when we spoke about the duodenum at the beginning is this structure right here that I've drawn. This is another fold, and it's really the main purpose of these folds for, for us is uh, as clinicians and anatomists is so that we can really understand what we're looking at inside the abdominal cavity. When you open an animal, it's, there's a lot going on. And if we can find some of these significant landmarks, like the ileocecal fold right here, or this one, which we call the duodenocolic fold, because it's connecting the duodenum to the descending colon,
basically this gives us some perspective as to where we are and really helps us orient ourselves within the abdominal cavity. And that's basically it for the major structures. Um, I'm just going to clear up some of this. Great. So I'm briefly going to touch on the blood supply just as a very uh, general approach. There's two major vessels that are going to supply the small and large intestine. The first one that's going to have the majority of the supply is going to be the cranial mesenteric artery. And that's always going to come down. You know you found it if you see it's passing caudally past the transverse colon right here. So if we're passing caudally from the transverse colon, this is going to supply the duodenum. It's going to send branches supplying parts of the ascending colon, really everything, the jejunum. It's even going to have branches going back towards the stomach. So this is the cranial mesenteric artery. There is also a caudal mesenteric artery when we have a cranial like that. The caudal mesenteric artery is a little more limited in what it's supplying as far as the intestines are concerned, but the caudal mesenteric artery is supplying mainly the descending colon. So this here is the caudal mesenteric artery. And that's the blood supply. When we're looking at the venous root leaving the small and large intestines, both of these are going to follow the cranial caudal mesenteric veins, and they're going to join up with the portal system. And the portal system we'll talk about in a future video. It's going to collect the blood that is going towards the liver for further metabolism. So that's it for this video. Tune in in the next video. We'll talk about some other domestic species and... Yeah, we'll see you next time.